What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with Mikey. He finally hand delivered my 450L back. So I finally got this thing back in my possession. It's a little early, but I took it for a rip today. It felt really good to be back behind the bars. I also got my Skyline back here from Florida. For those of you that don't know, this is thing straight from Japan. We got the right hand drive in front of the other right hand drive. But today we're gonna be starting the full assembly on the 252 stroke build. We got the engine straight from uh, the boys over at Honda. This is an 07 engine. Uh, don't know whose it was. I think it was either either Ernesto, Ramsey, or maybe McGrath. I'm not sure. They pulled it out of their storage unit and got it straight to me. They actually, my engine guy, Bob, that uh, obviously builds all my race engines and Kenny's race engines, he went through it, completely tore it apart, split the cases when uh, checked out the crank and literally everything inside of here is brand new so really excited to have this in our possession and this is what we're going to need to take home the victory at straight rhythm also got a ton of other parts i showed all this stuff on the bto channel just a bunch of plastics we got our frame and swing arm and subframe back from powder coat all this stuff turned out really really nice we went with powder coat this time because frame was a little pitted up so um we wanted to go with the safer route we did the uh, anodizing on the last, the uh, 450L build, so see how this holds up versus anodizing. We also got a ton of stuff from Moto stuff. The front disc, a little oversized action. We've got two rears, because we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have two rear uh, wheels at the race, so we can quick change tires and all that fun stuff. Full race setup. And then these guys, I think they just started making these, I don't know, but full titanium foot pegs. These things are really legit, like, I'm really excited to get these on. Obviously you can see I have a ton of bite for grip and they're super lightweight. Obviously you can't see how much that weighs, but uh, these things are very, very legit and very cool design also. What else? Oh. Some brake lines. We got our brake lines. Moto stuff banjos yeah. to match, so. Yeah, Moto stuff did blue um, for us on this thing. Yeah. I mentioned in the other video that I wanted to kind of do a tribute, kind of to the old Troy Lee bike. That's why we went with uh, blue radiator hoses. Just some, um, uh, some red and blue action looks really good together. Obviously it'd be a little different because we got black plastics, but yeah, what else did we get from Moto stuff? Oh, they sent over these cool spacers. Yep. We, ha we ran a couple of these on the- um, Factory stuff. Yeah, on the 450L build also. Just no real performance I'd say, but definitely, you know, kind of get the baller cool look going. Thanks for all the plastics. All the plastics and uh, other miscellaneous stuff. It's always cool to kind of tie everything together with that stuff. Um, our dudes over at Moto Whips did, I showed this on the other channel too, but they really did a good job with the uh, powder coating on the, all the uh, miscellaneous pieces, linkage and brake parts, engine hangers, all that stuff to get it all tied together. This is all Cerakote on all the brake parts and then all these pieces are powder coat. They go ahead and take care of all the casting lines, clean it all up, so super clean look and it's gonna be rad. Yeah, I, I showed this tank off in my retirement video, but now that since this is a build video, I'll go ahead and show it again. This guy's over at CMT Composi Compositi. I don't know if you can see that that website right there. They make some really awesome carbon products, and uh, definitely go guy check these guys out. It's really really high quality stuff. The fit and finish is amazing, so definitely check that out. Also sent a few other pieces over here, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, suspension too. Um, showed this already too on the BTO stuff, like I said, but. We got uh, some KYB forks over here, and I got my shock over here. I, I gotta take this apart still and send it off to coating. Got a few more weeks till that needs to get done, so um, gotta get on this. But we're gonna go ahead and get to building this thing. I'm not sure, what, I guess we'll probably get a lot done. This might be a two-part series, so, um, or at least this video and next video will be, but get the engine in, get the swing arm on. Um, Man, whatever else we can get into. Hopefully get the front end on. Well, yeah, we gotta make sure these, so we line these up before we think those extra clamps will work with the fork and this frame. Don't even need to, I, I thought, I explained it in the last video how you have to press out the stem, not even thinking about, I, I haven't worked with X-Trig in so long, but their stem actually unbolts, so there is no pressing. So there's no pressing the stock one out and putting that new one in. Um, it's just supposed to just line up. So we'll see how that goes. We'll figure that out today. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I kind of lied, I didn't put it on the tripod first, but we got the uh, Moto Stuff pegs on here. These things turned out awesome. Again, these are Thai, uh, super cool finish to them. I got the Honda there on the back. 
Uh, I can't really, my camera, oh there you go. So yeah, the reason we put the foot pegs on first <laughs> is so we could put it on the uh, Bleach Design Work stand over here and get a nice uh, stable platform to work on. We're gonna tie it down and uh, start building away on this thing. I'm sure some of you guys are gonna be probably criticizing us doing that first and putting on the stand, but that's, I don't know, that's the way we do things, I guess. And, uh, sorry, Rich. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Rich. Sorry, Lars, sorry, Tommy, whoever else is watching this. <laughs> But uh, no, that's just a, just a good uh, workspace. Uh, we were kind of contemplating doing the motor or the front end first, but I think we're gonna do the motor just to have some more weight in the frame and have a better, uh, like I said, just stable workstation here. This is a reference picture I took when we were taking it apart. Let's get this thing to focus. Mm. So that's that's the old <laughs> engine. <laughs> that's the new. Like it's <laughs> crazy. Obviously it's all brand new stuff, but it's gonna be much much better. Give you guys a little walk around. These are crazy. I don't know if it's something against Ricky, but this one came without a Ricky Carmichael valve. We're gonna have to find one of those, maybe off the old motor. No, it just came without the mechanical stuff. I know. Maybe we could hit, I'm friends with Ricky Carmichael now, maybe we could. Yeah, hit sorry, him up. Pick up that name I just dropped. Shout him out. <laughs> Ricky, you got any, you uh, got any RC valves for us? We need some, brother. Send him over. All right, we've got the engine all in here. Uh, we had heading, heading through the, the engine mount bolts in there. We've got the engine hanger up top. This thing looks really cool. It's probably one of those pieces that will go kind of unrecognized once the bike's fully together, but got it powder coated black and just trying to give attention to detail to everything. I went ahead and I've been off camera for a little bit, just like polishing all these like random parts, just like I don't know. I don't want the thing to be super clean, so the attention to detail definitely needs to be like next level. With the L, it was pretty easy because everything was brand new, so like we didn't really need to go over very many parts unless we were trying to customize something. With this, we have to customize everything and also clean everything up. So it's taking a little bit longer to build this one, but it'll be worth it in the end because this thing's going to be sweet. But I think we're going to go ahead and try and mock up the front end now. Um, we got the races back in there, but the extra clamps, these are for a newer model and they're supposed to fit. So, um, I don't know if one of you out there is thinking of, um, retrofitting a front end onto your old two stroke, this will kind of answer the question now. And it'll answer our question because we weren't exactly sure how this was going to line up or how it was going to work. But, um, these are pretty much just right out of the box, extra clamps. Uh, here, I'll show you the, show the bottom of it. Yeah. So extra comes with like a stem that you can literally unbolt and then flip and rebolt and it changes the um, the, offset, right? the offset or the rake or one yeah two, or get, two options like whatever's not showing. If it'll show twenty or twenty two. I think we're with twenty right now. It might be a twenty two. I forget. We'll see when the bolt's on there. But anyways, this is I I said in the previous video that we were gonna need to press that stem out and press the old uh, OEM stem back in it, but obviously with those bolts on the bottom of it, you can't. So we'll uh, we'll kind of check in in a second here and see how these things uh, line up with the O3 chassis and the brand new front uh, extra clamps. All right, so we got these all on. They line up perfectly. Um, just stock race, I think. It was just the O3 race with the new extra bearing and everything that came in the box. So this was one thing that I was kind of stressing out about, but these are probably one of the most over, I don't know, over engineered or like well engineered parts you can put on your bike. Um, I'm not affiliated with x in any way, but they're pretty awesome. Uh, 
just the way that you can change the offset. Right now we're running 22. Like I said, if you unbolt it from the bottom, you can run a 20 or just like, I don't know, it's wild. I don't even know how, under, really fully understand how they work. But also one interesting thing about that, these clamps is there is no lock. Um, this, here's, I'll use the stock one as an example. Usually, you know, you have this lock ring that sits between the frame and the uh, clamp. These don't have that. What they do is they actually just have this bolt up top and then, I don't know, you get this to focus. So they just have this bolt up top and then this, you can kind of see the stem sitting in there. And then they have another bolt right here that just threads into the top of this and it goes until it hits the stem and that's your like lock, I don't know, the way to like lock the steering, I guess. So you adjust the stiffness of the steering with this bolt and then you tighten that. So it's kind of a trip, like really well engineered, really well thought out piece of machinery and stuck to be running these on the, uh, and it looks really cool, the color. I didn't really even think about that, but this color looks cool with the black. So yeah, we'll throw on the bar mounts now. These are interesting too, right? Yeah, rubber mounted. Um, I can't remember if these clamps are really stiff or really soft. I remember running them years ago and actually being able to feel a difference between like different manufacturers that I was running at the time. And these had a really true feel to them. I really liked them, especially for Supercross. Pretty sure you can change the density in these, right? To get a more rigid Yeah, solid. yeah, they do they make different washers. Yeah, or I think they might even make solid ones too, but yeah. crazy, crazy amount of combinations you can run with these clamps. Again, extra like kind of blowing my mind. Just like the way everything like comes apart and goes together. Like these just like there's so many pieces that go into I don't know, this whole setup. I'm probably doing this wrong, but um, just there's so many little parts to even just the bar mounts. Um, really cool but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on first and then put the 999s on I haven't ridden 999s in like five or six years so I'm really excited to run those I don't know why just like that classic low bend with the uh, crossbar is really cool all right I got the bars all on I kind of explained it earlier why I went with the 999 bend um, the way that the kind of the saddle versus bar position is on this bike is a lot different than the new bikes so I feel like the saddle sits a little lower, so I want the bars to sit low too. Um, the new bike's it's a little bit more plain, and uh, I run a little bit taller of a bar, but yeah, that's all gonna kind of be answered here in a month or so. But um, I just mentioned how we're gonna put the forks on. I don't think we're gonna do that because it's gonna kind of, as much as I wanna see them on there, it's gonna kind of make it sit awkwardly on the stand. And from trying to get the swing arm pivot out, which is also an engine mount, obviously, um, this thing, was so, it's such a pain to get out. I explained it in the last video, but we destroyed the threads trying to get it out. So I gotta get a new one of those. So we're kind of working around it. But for now, we're just gonna, I think we're gonna put the air box on. We got a carburetor. I don't know if I showed that earlier. Um, I literally got a carburetor right before I started filming this video. So yeah. carburetor, air box, throw the subframe on and kind of make it look, I don't know almost complete like it's not just the front end's done and then the back end's left empty but um here actually this is the carburetor right here a lot of you guys were telling me to go with the electron self-jetting one i have heard better things about this um key in carb i don't really know much about carburetors to be honest but this is what i was told to get has i don't know as long as you can get the jetting right <laughs> i haven't said jetting in years but as long as you get the jetting right, these are supposed to be pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this on. Mikey's peeling off the old decal on the airbox right now. And uh, yeah, this clean this thing up. It's very, very used, used and abused, <laughs> but never clean. This also came with a fully jet kit um, with some spares. And I'm sure there's a diagram in here. It looks like there's a chart to show you what you should be running. I'm gonna go ahead. I have a friend who has a 250 also that I'm gonna use what he says to use and then kind of go from there. Um, the Honda guys are also gonna be struggling with jetting too, so we gotta get, figure all that stuff out as good as we've gotten with fuel injection and mapping and all that good stuff. We've lost the art of tuning a carburetor, so we'll learn how to do that again. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, update you guys here in a couple minutes. It's two show problems right here at its finest. Um, we got our jetting guide here, so there's just a kind of a suggested jetting, so I'm gonna go with it, I guess. This is the weirdest thing. I haven't done this. I don't think I've ever done this, because my dad used to work on my 80s, and then... We're gonna have to call Jeff up and see what he thinks. <laughs>
This is wild. I'm be instantly rattled this to hear. This thing doesn't run. It's going to be my fault. <laughs> And I'm having a hard time reading these numbers because of my old ass eyes. What are we just putting 45 across the board? I got 175 main jet right now. I know if I bought Electron, all you Electron fanboys out there are telling me not to run it, but or not telling me to run it. But I like jetting. What are the settings you're gonna you're gonna start with? Where are we starting? 175 main jet, 45 pilot. Uh, the blue needle, it comes with different colored needles, I guess, <laughs> in the third clip position. That's what I'm going with. See what happens. All right, so kind of story of this whole build. Everything's taking a lot longer than we had anticipated. We really wanted to get the back end on, but I kind of got um, caught up in looking up what jetting I needed to use. So I had the carburetor all apart, changed the needle position. Actually, Mike changed the needle position. I changed the main jet, the pilot jet, um, kind of worked on getting it all in there and mounting it up. But um, yeah, I think we're just gonna end here today. Um, as much as progress as we were hoping to get, we didn't get as far. Like, like I said though, like everything needed to be like touched up, all the old bolts, like all this stuff that's gonna stand out, like these, these engine hanger bolts, they all, we're in pretty bad condition, so we wanted to get them all dialed in, and I don't know, the attention to detail needed to be there. Both me and Mikey are pretty OCD when it comes to that kind of stuff. So yeah, just gonna end here. I'm really stoked on the way it looks already, but uh, Mikey's taken off the RC valve on the old engine. We're gonna probably get it coated. Um, as you can see, there is no RC valve mechanism here. Um, what else? Oh, Mikey also, Took the graphics off of this. This thing was caked in filter oil in here. Got it all cleaned up. It looks like brand new. Um, so we need to put that in the subframe. That's another thing. All those bolts are really ugly and gross. So I was gonna put that in, but I don't wanna put it in and have to take it apart again. So I'm gonna end here. Next video is probably gonna be on the BTO channel. So thank you guys for going over there and subscribing to their channel. And we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that kind of stuff. So again, ending here. We'll catch up next week, and thank you guys for tuning in. Like, subscribe, uh, comment, let us know what you think of everything, and um, we should have a lot more parts coming in this week, so I'll have another update and uh, a lot more parts to show you guys next week. So, see ya.